In this video, we're going to take a look at how to use a decal projector in both the URP and the HDRP. With Unity 2021, URP 12, URP now has a decal projector component that will work just like the HDRP one, almost, and HDRP has had this component since HDRP 6. Hey, Chris here from Mom Academy, here to help you, yes you, make your game dev dreams become a reality. A little sneak peek into the future is the HDRP one is significantly better than the URP one, but I have hopes that the URP one will improve over time since we already have this capability that's improved in HDRP, and this is the first release of the URP one. What's really cool about how both of these decal projectors work is that they will wrap the decal around whatever shape that we're projecting the decal onto. So if you've looked at any videos where you have like a bullet impact and it makes impact into something and just uses a flat plane decal for a bullet hole, if you hit like the edge of a railing or the edge of a wall or something, it doesn't really look right. With these decal projectors, it will look significantly better and wrap around the geometry that you hit. Unfortunately, the built-in render pipeline does not have a useful projector component for handling decals. It does have a projector component that works on the shadow map of the materials that it's projecting onto. In URP and HDRP, it affects on the albedo, which is a much more useful way of projecting decals. So you can get some simple decals projected using the built-in render pipeline using the projection component. But if you want some more detail on that projection of that bullet impact, it's not just black hole, then it's really kind of challenging to do that with the built-in render pipeline. You have to make your own shader that mimics essentially what happens on either HDRP or URP. So we're gonna skip over the built-in render pipeline and focus on URP and HDRP. All right, so what I've done is created a new URP scene, just created this kind of empty looking scene with a cylinder and a sphere here. One has the ProBuilder material and one has this kind of wooden material that came from the Unity Particle Pack. When you start out in the URP, it does not have decals enabled. To enable it, you can select your Universal Render Data, which is in the Assets, Settings, and then choose the one that you're currently using. I've got the default high fidelity one selected with basically all the normal stuff here. If I click Add Render a Feature, we'll see that a decal option is available here now. Click OK on that, and you'll see my decals appear because I've already created some decal projectors in this scene. Before we get into using the decal projector, I want to take a look at what are the options available here on the decal feature. By default, it's going to show you the technique and the max draw distance. So if we set that max draw distance to be really low, you won't see any of the decals in the scene because they're too far away. For the technique, automatic, probably you're going to be fine with, but if you want to get more advanced into some of the configurations here, we have debuffer and screen space. I don't know how it determines which one it should use, but for debuffer, you can choose how much surface data you want to provide to the debuffer. So you can override things like only the albedo, the albedo normal, and albedo normal and meios, which ends up allowing you to override not only the albedo and the normal, but also the base color, emissive color, normals, metallic values, smoothest, and the ambient occlusion value. So a bunch of stuff. There are some limitations to how the debuffer one works. This one's actually less efficient on tile-based GPUs. So if, if you're targeting some platform where you know the GPUs are gonna be tile-based, this one will be less performant than if you use the screen space one. This also doesn't work on particles or terrain details. So the other option is screen space. We click on that, it gives us the option of normal blend and you use G buffer. You can choose how high of a quality normal blend you want and whether or not to use the G buffer. You'll probably want to enable this if using the deferred rendering system because then it will also apply to all of those things that we're talking about the debuffer, like affecting base color, emissive color, and normals. Okay, so I'm gonna change this back to automatic. Honestly, in this demo scene, I couldn't tell the difference between any of these. They were all working basically the same, but I'm also not using fancy stuff like having very complicated textures with emissive textures and stuff like that. So consider all what we just talked about or start with automatic and see if it does what you need. Leave it alone and only configure if you need it to be something different than what the automatic one gives you. Now that we've enabled decals, let's take a look at how the decal projector will apply decals to some other objects. First, to create a decal projector, you can right click rendering URP decal projector. That will create a new game object with the URP decal projector. You'll notice that it has one material called decal that simply projects a white box onto some object. The key thing here is that that decal material is shader graphs slash decal. For the decal projector to work, you need to be using this shader. In this project, I have three materials created using the shader. One's a blob shadow, 
run the bullet hole and runs a smiley. You get some cool controls here in the inspector to adjust how your decal projector will work. The first one allows you to adjust the bounds much like you do a collider. You'll notice that adjusting these just changes the width, height, projection depth, and pivot using the first control. The second and third one both adjust the material tiling and offset, and also possibly width, height, and depth, and pivot. The second one just crops your image within the bounds that you've specified. The final one allows you to adjust where the UV projection is. This is particularly useful if you want to use a packed texture, which will improve your draw calls. So if we have one texture that has all of our possible decals, then we can use the same material for all the decal projections, adjust them with this last pivot slash UV section, and that will allow us to draw potentially all of our decals in a single draw call. We'll look more at that in a little bit. Next, let's take a look at the sphere where we're gonna take a look at the material properties of this shader graphs decal shader. In here, you can specify the base map in a normal map, as well as this property normal blend. We're gonna ignore the advanced options except GPU instancing, which should always be turned on in your game. I will include a link to the URP shader documentation if you run into the case where you need to adjust the priority or mesh bias type. Most of the time, you don't need to touch these. That's why I'm skipping over them. If we look at the sphere, we'll see that there's kind of a box around our decal where it looks wrong, right? There's like a dark shade around where the projection box is. This is because I have the normal blend set to basically anything that's non-zero. The higher values up to one that I place here, the darker they get or the more wrong they look. The closer to zero they get, the better they look. I found in that URP, the normal blend does not work very well. And I think it's because it doesn't quite properly map the normal map where there's no value onto the object that we're projecting onto to consider that the base map has transparency there. A sneak peek forward is that in HDRP, this is not a problem. So I'm hopeful that in a future release of the URP, this will be resolved. But regardless of what value I set here, if it's non-zero, I can tell that there's something wrong, regardless also of which decal technique that I use. Just always, it doesn't work correctly, unless I'm specifically using debuffer albedo because then we're ignoring that normal map. So my tentative recommendation is to not use the normal map essentially, because providing a zero value for normal blend and not providing a normal map are the exact same result. The final thing that I want to talk about with the URP decal rendering is the performance. If we click play, take a look at our pro Profiler, we'll see right now with however many decals this is, six decals, I'm getting 56 draw calls, five of which are batched into one batch, and there are 60 triangles, 40 vertices that are batched in those draw calls. If I then remove all but one of these decal projectors on the sphere, we'll see that my draw calls do not change, but I do get fewer triangles and vertices. So I have fewer batch draw calls here because I'm using the GPU instancing in the advanced options of this shader. If we disable that, and enable all these decals, you'll see that my draw calls shoot up because we cannot batch these because they're not GPU instanced. That's why I was saying I always recommend that you have GPU instancing turned on. Because I'm not using a packed texture for these decals, I have two draw calls here for decals, one for that smiley heart face guy and one for all of these bullet decals. Now let's take a look at the HDRP settings to enable decals. This is enabled by default on HDRP. So you can go to Assets, Settings, HDRP Default Resources, select your HD Render Pipeline asset, find decals under the rendering section and click Enable. You can choose to enable all kinds of different stuff here. Much like we were talking on the debuffer, we can have it where it impacts the metal, ambient inclusion, normal blending, all kinds of stuff here. We can also have high precision normal blending. You don't have different modes or really as much to configure here. You kind of just turn on features and it's supposed to work. So let's take a look. How does it look? I have the exact same materials that I had before, just in this HDRP project. I tried to make these two projects as close as possible. To create a new decal here, we'll do almost the same thing. Right click, rendering HDRP decal projector. We'll get a new game object, this time with HDRP decal projector. And big surprise, we get a white cube projected down. On this one, we have a default HD decal material Material, which is HDRP slash decal. So for the materials that we have in this project, you'll notice that they all are HDRP decal. This one is set up a little bit differently, much like most of HDRP is slightly different from everything else. We have surface options where we can toggle on and off different capabilities, which will enable different inputs down below. You'll notice that this one does not allow us to toggle something on to enable draw call batching. It is automatically done for us. So again, we have the blob shadow, 
I don't know why you use Bob Shadows in HDRB, but we have the same thing. Bullet hole and the grin decal. I'm gonna put the bullet hole back because on this one, you'll notice that the normal is actually applied correctly. It's only if I enable things like smoothness and metal because my mask is not correctly created for those that we start getting that weird behavior. So as long as you correctly create your mask map on HDRP, it's going to correctly project whatever you have going on onto that material. This is the behavior that we're looking for URP to have in the future. We have much of the same controls that you saw in URP, where we can adjust the size, projection depth, pivot, and we get the same basic kind of controls. Much like the collider, we can come here and adjust how big the projection is, which adjusts the width, height, pivot, and projection depth. We also have the crop feature that you'll see as we adjust, adjusts the size, projection depth, pivot, and also the tiling and offset on the material. The UV one is the last one, which again is modifying the tiling and the offset of the material. So that way we can have multiple different decals on the same textures, which will allow us to batch more decals together, which will reduce our draw calls and improve our performance. Okay, let's delete that one and look back at our sphere. On this one, you can see that when we project these normal maps and this decal, it looks a lot nicer because it is correctly blending the normal of this hole onto that sphere. So it actually kind of looks like there's a hole there or an indentation at the very least. To take a look at the performance, let's again click play. You'll see in the bottom down here, we have 90 draw calls. Seven of them are batched when all of these are enabled. If I disable all of these bullets but one, that will go down to three batches, still only 90 draw calls. So that's great. By default, HDRP will batch our decals for us that are using the same materials. There's one final thing I want to show that HDRP has that URP does not have yet. Watch really closely on these bullet holes as I enable and disable the game objects. You'll notice that the bullet decal instantaneously shows up, but fades out when we disable the game object. So the HDRP decal projector has an automatic fade out. On URP, it's instantaneous and does not provide this fade behavior. I want to give a huge shout out to all of my Patreon supporters. Every one of you is helping this channel grow, reach more people, and add value to more people, and that means more people are making their game development dreams become a reality. If you want to support this channel, you can go to patreon.com slash academy, choose which tier is right for you, get a voice shout out starting at the awesome tier, and some other cool perks at the tremendous and phenomenal tier level. Speaking of those awesome tier supporters, I have Andrew Bowen, Gerald Anderson, Autumn K, Matt Parkin, and Paul Barry. Thank you all for your support. I am so grateful. I hope this URP HDRP decal projection overview gives you a good start on understanding how you can use that in your game for doing things like bullet decals, blob shadows, or any other kind of decal that you need to add some detail into your game. Remember, these don't have to only be created at runtime for bullet impacts or something like that. They can be used to just add some extra detail into your game, add like newspapers on the ground, some scuff marks into the dirt, anything like that where you just need extra detail added into your game. Remember that the built-in render pipeline doesn't really support this very well. The projector there works on the shadow map only, so we can't really add anything that has color or effects emission or normals, anything like that is really limited on what we can do in the built-in render pipeline. If you got value out of this video, please consider liking and subscribing to help the channel grow, reach more people, and add value to more people. There's new videos posted every tutorial Tuesday, and I'll see you next week.